Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Over the last week or so, I've been working on a series of reels that Bobby has sent in to me. He uh, pretty much said they all deserve a second chance. There's something wrong with each one of them. Uh, do what you can to fix the ones that you can. Let me know how you made out. So uh, I thought I would take you through what the progress was, what we were able to do with these, and, uh, well, give you an idea of some of the common failures of reels and the ones that can be repaired. Some of these have been the subject of videos. I posted uh, at least one of these. I think there's at least one more that will be posted, but I thought I would give you a recap here and I will call this one Why Reels Fail and How to Correct. I did not have success with all the reels. We'll talk a little bit about what uh, what issues I remain on the reels that I could not fix. But uh, overall, I thought uh, it would be a good time. A lot of folks uh, watch my previews of reels that come into my shop, and they often ask what happened to those reels. So this will be an opportunity to give you an update on some of those. Well, if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to see how reels are serviced, like to learn a little bit about problem diagnosis and how to repair the reels, well, that's what this channel is about. It's about teaching you how to do it yourself, expanding your, uh, your knowledge of uh, fishing reels in general, and uh, well, giving you an idea if you're uh, into the hobby uh, about which ways and directions you can go, what you can learn, and what you can uh, uh, get from those reels, uh, other than the satisfaction of taking something that was broken and putting it back together again. Well, let's uh, let's jump right into these. The first one was actually a video that I've just done. This one is on an Ambassador Abu Power 4. I learned from uh, the schematic that this reel was made in 1989. When it came in, uh, Bobby told me that the thumb bar didn't work. In other words, he didn't have free spool. Well, we've solved the issue with that, and he didn't have a click mechanism that went back. When we opened up the reel, we found that it was missing parts inside. So somebody apparently had taken the opportunity to try and service the reel, gave up on it, and uh, well, Bobby had Bobby got it not understanding what the issues were, but we were able to resolve them. The biggest part it was missing was a spring that forces the yoke back in that enables it to engage with the, the pinion gear to engage with the spool. So that one's an early success and uh, one that I was uh, quite happy to put on video. Well, let's go to the early failure. There's a Cardinal Bronco and he said uh, internal problem. Well, he is absolutely right. There was an internal problem to this one. I didn't put it on video. You can see we've got partial spinning going on, but notice what's moving. What's moving is the rotor, not the oscillation. The spool is kind of locked there. It's not going up and down. The cause for that is that the back end of the main gear, the, the smaller gear that drives the oscillation gear was totally shredded. It had about three of the uh, 12 or so teeth remaining. So somebody had this one probably snagged up on something, tried to power out of it. When you try to power out of it, never a good idea. Something's going to give and the teeth, the backside drive teeth for the oscillation gear on this reel is what failed. So this one is a parts reel. Next up, we'll call this one a partial success. This one is a uh, Quantum XT. Beautiful little reel. It's a great pond reel. Uh, it's a nice, uh, I'm going to say the, the maybe the 1500 size, maybe 2000 size. Uh, this one was a mess. It wasn't working at all. Still having a little bit of an issue here with the, the bail. It does, does work most of the time. But uh, the problem that remains is that the easy trip mechanism doesn't work any longer. I've checked this one out. There is a, a little shaft that's kind of hard to see, but there's a mechanism here that's got a chip broken off of it. That means you would have to replace this uh, uh, little lever arm here. And uh, well, the reel is too old. You're not going to find out even if you wanted to do it. What's my recommendation with this? Fish it as a regular reel. It's been serviced. It's been repaired. Well, it's no different than any of these other reels like this one. Just flip the bale manually instead of using the easy cast. When you're done, crank it. There you go. So that one's been solved. Next one that came in was uh, this dial of 403A. It said the bail will not work. When I uh, opened this one up, the bail spring was not set properly. And well, this is easy enough. The bail spring is now set. 
the entire reel's been serviced. This is a classic. It's a 1970s uh, made in Korea reel. It's a beautiful little reel, and Bobby will have a place in his heart for that one, I'm sure. He also brought this one in. It said dried grease. This is the first one he got right. It was dried grease in this one. This is the pen. This is the 109. So the 109 reel has what's called the knuckle buster feature. It's going to uh, turn backwards when you're in free spool. So that's the wrong way for it to go. But if you were to cast out the line, the handle is going to turn backwards. This one was hardly turning at all. We took it apart. We gave it a good cleaning. I uh, went back to uh, grease it, lube it up, and well, it's a beautiful little operating reel now. So he's got a winner there. We also had a Zebco come in. I'm sorry, a Quantum, Quantum Zebco. It's, uh, I don't even know which one this is. It's out of the 1990s. And he had taken this apart and he said, I'm able to put the bail back on. Well, the first thing we did was put the bail back on, realized he had the wrong screw, so it wasn't holding tight. That's not the screw for this reel, but it's the screw from another reel that fits this reel. So we were able to go ahead and do that. And again, we now have a nice functioning bail on the thing. I guess you have to spin them a little hard sometimes. These are uh, easy trip reels. But uh, overall, this one's ready to go fishing again. Let's go to our second failure. So we, uh, we talked, one failed. One was kind of a failure. You can use it, but it's manual. This one you cannot use. This is a um, South Bend 900 direct drive reel. And uh, this one is the same as the Shakespeare direct drive reel. The only difference being the color of the plastic and the name on the outside. In the 1950s, Shakespeare made a lot of the reels for South Bend. This one was particularly interesting, so I thought I would take a moment to show you what's going on inside this reel. Kind of fun. One of the things you're going to notice on this reel is that you have a divider here, and I believe it's rubber. It may be plastic, but I, I've heard along the ways that it might be a rubber, not plastic, as a spacer to hold your main gears. You're going to notice we've got quite a lip here. You've got a high spot over here, then you look, you've got low spots on the rest of this. Kind of an interesting little uh, piece, which says this has become warped or distorted. And sure enough, when we get inside here, there's one more screw to take out here. So Bobby said it's probably dried grease. It's running really hard. Well, he's right. It is running hard. But when you take the plate off, You're going to notice that we have a neoprene or nylon gear set. But the problem that we have is that this has shrunk to the point where it's putting pressure onto the main gear. You can see that over here we got some good spacing. Here we have none. So what's happened is this is just kind of clamping its way in. It's shrinking down, holding on the main gear, and causing that main gear to turn very abruptly. I didn't work on, the, on this reel because of the, uh, how fragile this outside plate is. I guess what you could do is you could probably remove the main gear, it'll just slide off the shaft here, and use a Dremel tool perhaps to try and remove some of the piece that's kind of in, impinging on the, the movement of it. But there's also a flat side on the back. This uh, is not open in the back. It's got the same case in the back. So it may be pushing up on the main gear as well. If it's doing that, then, uh, well, it may be, what do they say, the fool's errand to, uh, to try and do that. Well, we'll just put that off to the side. I'll put it back together. But this is the result of this. Is it very hard to turn? It can turn, but it's very hard, and that's because the main gear and you can see the shrinkage here, right? The main gear is brushing up against the case. And you can see we probably got, I don't know, 30 seconds of an inch or something here of the case that's pulled in and is putting the pressure on that. That's a, uh, a parts reel, or if somebody has a Dremel tool that wants to work on it. This one I just did a full video on. This is the True Temper 944. 
Uh, it's taken over from Ocean City. So True Temper bought Ocean City in 1957. When Real came in, it was seized. Bobby said that the issue here was that the, uh, he called it dried grease, but I think we had dried grease on all of that. And then he said the drag's not working properly and it's a spool tension problem. What we found out with this one is that the pinning gear of this reel froze to the shaft of the spool. It was rusted on. Well, when it's rusted on, your, your spool's not going to move in and out. You're not going to have a free spool, and it's going to turn very tough. Well, got that one fixed as well. So there you go. Well, those are an update on about eight reels. I had worked on two of them that made it to video, the Ambassador and the um, uh, True Temper. And one that we just kind of explained right here what the problem is and what the cause of that problem was. And that one, uh, unless you can get an internal spacer, maybe you can even take one if you have a junk Shakespeare reel, direct drive, you can take the one off the Shakespeare. The Shakespeare is a bone colored one or white. It's not the uh, burgundy one of this, but it will make that reel run again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed all of that. I hope you've enjoyed the update. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Again, if you do, uh, please subscribe, and if you do subscribe, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting. Before I leave, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel for everything they do to keep us safe. Fire, rescue, police, everybody that's involved in public safety, thank you. And to everybody, have a great day. Take the opportunity to find some broken reels at flea markets, yard sales, and the like. Take them apart. Try to understand what it is that has caused the failure. You can get the reels cheap if they're not working. You can get a lot of knowledge, I call it tuition reels, you can get a lot of knowledge from taking them apart and understanding, and surprise, surprise, you may be, you, maybe it's, it's in you to fix some of these and give them a second chance, and uh, that's kind of what this is all about. So, with all of that, I want to wish you all a great day, and thank you again for watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Time.